Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are continuing with my Frank Ocean discography journey. We have made it to his second album, his second and latest album from 2016 called Blonde. Now last week I did listen to his debut album, Channel Orange from 2012, and I was thoroughly impressed with that album. I enjoyed it so much, so I have, again, high expectations for this album because just like Channel Orange, this is regarded as one of the best albums of the 2010s decade. It's even regarded as one of the best albums of Y2K, the 21st century. It's regarded as also one of the greatest albums of all time. The themes of Blonde surround Ocean dealing with his masculinity and emotions inspired by sexual experiences, heartbreak, loss, and trauma. Frank did state that he was influenced by the Beach Boys, and The Beatles. Now I am looking at the track listing for Blonde. There are 17 tracks for a total of one hour. And I also don't recall hearing any of these songs before, but like always, if I start listening to a song that sounds familiar, I'll let you guys know. And like I said already, I have extremely high expectations for this album. And in 2020, Pitchfork named it the best album of the 2010s decade, and Rolling Stone ranked it at number 79, on their updated list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. <sighs> I'm already overwhelmed. <laughs> so let's get into it with track one, Nikes. <laughs> That was track one, Nikes. Very, very interesting. Um, obviously, I wasn't expecting the auto-tune vocals. I quite enjoyed the overall production on this track. That more dream pop aesthetic. I thought it was gorgeous. Now, the lyrics, that's a whole other beast because I really don't know the overall storyline of this track. These bitches want Nikes, they looking for a check, tell them it ain't likely, said she needs a ring like Carmelo, you must be on that white like a fellow, all you want is Nikes, but the real ones, just like you, just like me. He's also referencing drugs and also other rappers, like ASAP, and rest in peace Pimp C, rest in peace Trayvon, I'm not him. But I'll mean something to you, I'll mean something to you. You got a roommate, he'll hear what we do. It's only awkward if you're fucking him too. Well. So he's singing about these Nikes and drugs and these rappers and also this girl who he seems to be interested in. His girl keep the scales a little mermaid. That my little cousin, he got a little trade. Now it looks like the song is a critique of the excesses of modern life making frequent references to Nike. The girl Frank Ocean is singing about here is typically materialistic, wanting the latest trendy footwear. Frank also gives shoutouts to three deceased people during the song. ASAP Yams, one of the founders of ASAP Mob Collective, who died in 2015 from a drug overdose. 
Okay, and Texas hip hop artist and producer Pimp C. He passed away from a reported cough syrup overdose in 2007. And also African American teenager Trayvon Martin, who was killed in 2012 by mixed race neighborhood watchman George Zimmerman. Oh, okay. When explaining the album cover for Blonde, Frank Ocean said, two years ago, I found an image of a kid with her hands covering her face. A seatbelt reached across her torso, riding up her neck, and a mob of blonde hair stayed swept for the moment behind her ears. Her eyes seemed clear and calm, but not blank. The road behind her seemed the same. I put myself in her seat, and I played it all out in my head. This was quite the intriguing way to open up the album Blonde, and... It has definitely piqued my interest for was to come. But let's move on to track two, Ivy. I thought that I was dreaming when you said you loved me. The start of nothing new, I could hate you now. If I could see the walls, I could see you faking. We didn't get a fun back then, I ain't a kid no more. We tried to sing, had the exes back then. I thought that I was That was track two, Ivy. And first I'll comment on that ending. I've been dreaming of you, dreaming of you. Quite scary, I won't lie, that particular part. And then there was some sort of tantrum happening. Um, I'm assuming it was Frank Ocean. He was extremely frustrated, angry. He was throwing things around. Um, just pure frustration. I thought that I was dreaming when you said you loved me. The start of nothing. I had no chance to prepare. I couldn't see you coming. It started from nothing. I could hate you now. It's quite alright to hate me now. When we both know that deep down, the feeling still deep down is good. We didn't give a fuck back then. I ain't a kid no more. We'll never be those kids again. I broke your heart last week. You'll probably feel better by the weekend. Still remember, had you going crazy, screaming my name. Aw, so this was a very prominent love in Frank Ocean's life. This particular relationship. And it seemed like... It meant a lot to him. We aren't kids anymore. You're not a kid anymore. I'm not a kid anymore. And he broke their heart. And it just went downhill. This part in particular resonated with me when he said, I thought that I was dreaming when you said you loved me. The start of nothing. I had no chance to prepare. The song is about lost youth, innocence, love, and sex. And it addresses someone whose heart was broken by the narrator. Frank's voice on the track was digitally manipulated so that he would sound younger in order to capture the time period the track evokes. He is singing about the good old days when they were younger and they were just kids and they were just doing whatever they wanted. They didn't give a fuck back then. But now they're older and things change and fucked up things happen and you regret things you said, things you did and relationships go to shit and you have second guesses as to how you acted in the relationship and you realize it's probably too late to go back and fix it. And unfortunately, 
you dream of this person still. I've been dreaming of you, dreaming of you. I mean, you really can't get more relatable than that. And it really doesn't just have to relate to someone you once dated. It could relate to a close friend or even a family member or something happened and things fell apart and now you might have regrets and just frustration over what happened. But let's move on to track three, Pink and White. That was track three, Pink and White. Another intriguing song on the album, and I'm finding the production on this album so far to be quite pleasing to listen to. I'm liking all the riffs, in particular on this track. I really like the piano. That's the way every day goes, every time we have no control. If the sky is pink and white, if the ground is black and yellow, it's the same way you show me. He also says, you show me love, glory from above, regard my dear, it's all downhill. From here, in the wake of a hurricane, a dark skin of a summer shade. These lyrics, I mean, God help me, these lyrics are beautiful to listen to and read. They're beautiful to read even though it takes a bit of time to actually decipher what he's saying. <laughs> Up the air from the swimming pool, you would kneel down to the dry land, kiss the earth that birthed you, gave you tools just to stay alive. Hmm. Give me something sweet, bitch, I might like immortality. This is life, immortality. <sighs> these lyrics, I mean, I don't know if I'm the only one, but these lyrics can get a bit overwhelming at times, just because it's a lot to unpack and digest. Frank Ocean details the joy of being in love on this track. However, he is wary that the relationship might have reached its pinnacle and suspects it's all downhill from here. Now, color does play a frequent part in Frank's music. Pink and white have been used by him previously on the Channel Orange tracks White and Pink Matter. Beyonce also provides vocals on the outro, but her presence is barely noticeable. Really? I would never have picked that up. <laughs> I remember reading in my prior Frank Ocean video for Channel Orange that Beyonce was a big fan of Frank's song, Thinking About You, and when she first heard it, apparently she cried. Frank was also featured on Beyonce's 2013 self-titled album, Beyonce. I believe it was the song called, um, Superpower. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous track to listen to. I like the progression of the overall composition, and then towards the end, we hear birds chirping, which, like I said, gorgeous. But let's move on to track four, Be Yourself. Many college students have gone to college and gotten hooked on drugs, marijuana, and alcohol. Be yourself and know that that's good enough. Don't try to be like someone else. Don't try to act like someone else. Rely and trust upon your own decisions on your own beliefs. When people become weed heads, they become sluggish, lazy, stupid, and unconcerned. That's all marijuana does to you. Do not smoke marijuana. Do not consume alcohol. This is mom, call me, bye. Thanks mom. <laughs> this reminded me of Frank's prior album, Channel Orange. What was the track? There was a track, I forget the name of it, but a kid recorded his mom giving him a lecture in the vehicle, in the car. 
They were driving somewhere, and what was the mom saying? Oh, she was giving her son a lesson on money. Many college students have gone to college and gone hooked on drugs, marijuana, and alcohol. Listen, stop trying to be somebody else. Don't try to be someone else. Be yourself. She really hits home with that. She kind of keeps repeating it to kind of drill it into your head. Don't use that cocaine or marijuana because that stuff is highly addictive. When people become weed heads, they become sluggish, lazy, stupid, and unconcerned. <laughs> I mean, this really is valuable stuff here. Do not consume alcohol. I'm gonna have to break that one. <laughs> I myself do consume alcohol, so... Sorry, mom, I can't get rid of that one. But do not get in the car with someone who is inebriated. Hallelujah. There are a lot of kids out there who don't hear these words from their parents, unfortunately. There are lots of kids who would probably listen to this album for the first time and hear this, and it would be the first time a mother figure or a father figure would tell them such things like, don't do drugs, don't do marijuana, alcohol, don't do these bad things. Um, so I think this is a very important song for many kids out there who might not have heard it from their own parents. For many kids though, it might just be one of those situations where their parents just expect them not to do what this mother is saying in this track. For example, my parents, I mean, my mother never told me to don't do drugs, don't do marijuana, don't do such and such, because, I don't know, maybe she just expected me not to do those things, but I never really had that talk with my mom or dad. It's something you hear more so in school from teachers, and I remember going to those high school assembly things in the gymnasium where there was a guest speaker, and for an hour they would talk about, you know, don't do drugs, don't do this, don't do that. But it really does hit you differently when it's an actual parent telling you it or some sort of father figure or mother figure. Is that a thing, mother figure? You hear father figure a lot. Mother figure? Mother. Okay, that's... <laughs> I was kind of going... That was kind of leading me down another path. <laughs> you little mother figure. Don't be stupid. But let's move on to track five, Solo. Might lose my jacket and hit a solo. We too loud in public, then police turn down the function. Now we outside and the time is perfect. And we don't gotta be solo. Right now, I prefer yellow, red bone. So mellow, fuck when be cutting you. I got that act right in the windy city that night. No trees to blow through, but blow me. Solo. Solo. It's hell on earth and the city's on fire In hell, in hell, there's heaven oh, 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 oh. So long, so long I'm skipping showers and switching socks Sleeping good and long White leaf on my boxers Green leaves turn to vapors for the low Now your baby mama ain't so vicious All she want is a picket fence And you protest and you pick a sign I brought trees to blow through But it's just me and no use Solo It's hell on earth and the city's on fire In hell, in hell, there's heaven That was track 5 solo, and I really, 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 really like this track. It's one of my favorites on the album so far. Um, I mean, I don't know, I just liked everything about it. There was also an interesting shriek sporadically throughout the song. This might sound stupid, but it reminded me of one of those birds you'd hear in the rainforest. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta tell you how much I vibe with you. And we don't gotta be solo. Now stay away from highways. My eyes like them red lights. Right now I prefer yellow. Red bone, so mellow. Fuck round, it be cutting you. Think we were better off solo. Two grams when the sunrise. Smoking good, rolling solo. 
It's a solo. I like this part here. It's hell on earth and the city's on fire and hail and hell. There's heaven. There's a bull and a matador dueling in the sky. He also says white leaf on my boxers, green leaf turned to vapors for the low and that mean cheap. The song addresses the pain of living a solo life through a coming-of-age perspective while maintaining an upbeat sound. The title is a double entendre. It can be interpreted as solo, as in alone, or solo, as in feeling sad. Okay. I don't really know much about drugs, to be honest with you, so I don't really have a lot of knowledge when it comes to that. So I don't know all, like, the different words and lingo used when it comes to drug use. It's a very moody song, the overall ambience of the track. And I just liked everything about it. It is definitely one of my favorites on the album. So let's move on to track six, Skyline 2. Got your metal on. Oh. The guy's Texas. That's a pretty long third gear in this car. Gliding on the fire, pretty fucking underneath moonlight now. Sunrise and sand comes the morning, hunting us with the Look, summer's not as long as it used to be. Everything comes like crazy. Wanna film a tape on the speed bump? We smell a California cage. That was track 6, Skyline 2. Um, I really love how lush this album is when it comes to the production. Also, lots of moments where we hear birds chirping and certain production moments that sound like tropical birds, at least to me, and it's a very warm sounding album, even though he does touch on very serious things. These relationships and being alone and breaking up, there's something quite warm and comforting about the overall instrumental on these tracks. It's like a warm hug. That's the best way I can explain it. This is joy. This is summer. Keep alive. Stay alive. Got your metal on. We're alone. Making sweet love. Taking time till God strikes us. That's a pretty fucking fast year flew by. That's a pretty long third gear in this car. Sunrise in sight, in comes a morning haunting us with the beams. Dear God, who is writing these songs? Obviously Frank Ocean, but other collaborators and songwriters. But these lyrics are just... <sighs> we smell of Californication, strike a pose, everything grows in the Congo. The lyrics of the song talk about sex and drugs. Kendrick Lamar chips in with the odd word here and there to further accentuate some of Frank's random thoughts. I will say this album is the perfect companion piece to Channel Orange. I feel like Channel Orange was more... Um, what's the word? I feel like Channel Orange was a bit more... Maybe a bit more commercial sounding. Whereas this, it's a lot more complex, especially when it comes to the songwriting. But he really does carry over themes and stories that he touched on on the album Channel Orange. But let's move on to track 7, Self Control. Poolside combo, about to sum last night. Oh, uh, Could we make it in? Do we have time? I'll be the boyfriend in your wet dreams tonight. Oh, you see. 
see me like a UFO as I made you your self control. Self control, my self control. Keep up playing. That was track seven, self-control. Why was I getting teary-eyed towards the end? I don't know. Um, wow. I really like the progression of this track. It was very interesting. It took interesting turns and just the overall instrumental, the strings, and also his vocals, I really liked. There's also some autotune vocals in the beginning. I like the more acoustic sound to the track initially, and it just kind of progresses into this other beast. <laughs> I really like this track. It's, again, one of my favorites on the album. I'll be the boyfriend in your wet dreams tonight. Noses on a rail, little virgin wears the white. You cut your hair, but you used to live a blonded life. Wish I was there. Wish we'd grown up on the same advice, and our time was right. Keep a place for me, I'll sleep between y'all, it's nothing. Now and then you miss it, sounds make you cry. Some nights you dance with tears in your eyes. I came to visit, cause you see me like a UFO. That's like never, cause I made you use your self-control. In the song, Frank Ocean attempts to woo somebody who has caught his eye here. He can't control himself around the person and wants to be with them, even though they are also involved with someone else. So that's the part where he says, um, I'll sleep in between y'all. <laughs> Aww. This is a good song. But let's move on to track eight, Good Guy. It's a good guy, he's been up. I, first time I saw you. It's a gay ball, you took me too. Not enough more, it's some song I should know you don't need me right now. But now I don't care about bitches like that, man. That shit, Jasmine fucking wrecked my heart. I don't even know how to feel about bitches. Wanna see the wanna die? Drink stars, every day. Shut the fuck up. 
That was tracks 8 and 9, Good Guy and Night. Good Guy was quite short, it was just over a minute. And again, I was getting a bit teary-eyed listening to this. Here's to the good guy, he hooked it up, said if I was in NY, I should look you up. I, first time, I never saw you, and you text nothing like you look. Here's to the gay bar you took me to. Here's when I realized you talk so much more than I do. I know you don't need me right now. And to you, it's just a late night out. And then there's this conversation happening between these guys in the car, I guess. And they're saying how these girls wrecked their hearts. Jasmine fucking wrecked my heart. I don't even know how to feel. And then it progresses into track nine, Nights. Nights is another highly intriguing song on the album. I was kind of getting the weekend vibes from it. That's one thing I like about this album. All of the songs keep you invested the entire time from beginning to end. The song is like two different parts. There's a part one and a part two. Get some gushy, have a calm night, shooters killing left and right, working through your worst night. If I get my money right, you know I won't need you. And I tell you, I hope the sack is full up. This feel like a quaalude. No sleep in my body, ain't no bitch in my body. New beginnings, new beginnings, wake up, the sun's going down. I will say, he does sing about the sun quite a bit in these songs, like sunrises and sunsets. Know them boys want to see me broke down and shit, bummed out and shit, stressed out and shit. That's everyday shit. Shut the fuck up, I don't want your conversation. Rolling marijuana, that's a cheap vacation. Like Channel Orange's Pyramids, this is a two-part odyssey about nocturnal activities. Yes, it's like Pyramids how that track, which I loved, it's one of my favorite tracks from Channel Orange. It's like a two-parter. It takes you on this journey from beginning to end. The first half is rap heavy and finds Frank describing fragmented events, including a former relationship. The second, more melancholic half, finds him reminiscing about living in his home state of Louisiana and his stay in Houston after Hurricane Katrina destroyed his New Orleans recording facility. I mean, these lyrics really do take a lot of analysis. Um, I feel like I would just be here forever if I was just doing it all on my own. Oh god, this reminds me of my weekend videos. I remember going on my weekend discography journey, in particular, the trilogy. I mean, those songs took forever to decipher. <laughs> But let's move on to track 10, Solo, Reprise. Hmm. <laughs> wow. An interlude of sorts, this fast-paced track is performed entirely by Andre 3000. Now, Andre was featured on Frank Ocean's prior album, Channel Orange. So low that I can give a fuck about what is trending, trying to cut down on my spending regardless of winning instead of pretending and bending over backwards. Over half of these hoes had work done, saying they want something real from a man, just saying it. We being real persons. After 20 years in, I'm so naive. I was under the impression that everyone that wrote their own verses is coming back different. And yeah, that shit hurts me. Was I working just way too hard? The topic of rappers who use ghostwriters has been high profile since 2015 when Meek Mill accused Drake of not writing his own raps and the pair exchanged diss tracks. But let's move on to track 11, Pretty Sweet. <laughs>
was track 11, pretty sweet. And this was quite dramatic, avant-garde. I don't really know how to articulate what I want to say. <laughs> I liked the vocals on this track, the echoing vocals. There was something quite tribal about it at times. To the edge I'll race, to the end I'll make it, all the risk I'll take it, head bang with my full friends, we pour a taste out for the dead, this is the blood, the body, the life right now. There's something quite, I guess, religious about this track as well. Mothers of us, be kind to the fathers on whom we rely. Fathers of us, be kind. We know you're sugar. We know you're sweet like a sucker. Pretty sweet. I really don't know what the story of this track is. The song paints Frank Ocean as a fraught risk taker. He is surrounded by the fake, by death, and by a fledgling life. Just like all the other tracks on the album, very intriguing. I mean, how many times have I used that word in this video? Intriguing, 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 intriguing. Very intriguing. Anyway, though, let's move on to track 12, Facebook Story. I was just telling you that I got this, this girl before, and Facebook arrived, and... Uh, she wanted me to accept her on Facebook. So I said, I'm in front of you, I don't need to accept you on Facebook. She thought that because I didn't accept her, she told me like, uh, it's, uh, it's over, yeah, I can't believe you. Every day, here in your house, for nothing. You know, virtual thing. Oh God, that's horrible. You don't love me, you won't accept my Facebook friend request, how dare you? Do people even use Facebook anymore? <laughs> I mean, yes, they do, of course, but, um, like, my grandma and mom. <laughs> I stopped using Facebook years ago. Like, three years ago. It just wasn't cool anymore. It used to be a cool place. I remember ten years ago, it was, like, a cool little club. It's not like that anymore. It's too corporate. It's too hollow. It's too... It's, like... It's like a dentist's office. It's so sterile and um, I just don't generally find Facebook fun anymore. The track features French musician and producer Sebastian recalling how a past relationship went downhill due to accusations of infidelity over Facebook. He's sitting in front of this girl and he's saying, why do I need to accept your friend request? It's virtual when I'm here in the flesh in front of you. I'm here in front of you, why do I need to do this virtual thing? Why do I need to accept your virtual Facebook friend? And she was getting all crazy and mad. I can't believe you. Social media has just added this extra layer of paranoia. But there is also some truth to how this girl was reacting in the track because social media really does open this door to possibilities when it comes to having anyone and everyone at your fingertips. Something we didn't really have 20 years ago. You can search someone up. And it kind of does open the door to flirtation and, um... And like I said, I mean, social media has opened the door to paranoia when it comes to your significant other. Was he doing? Was she doing? Why did he follow that person? Is he cheating on me? Anyway though, let's move on to track 13, Close to You. That was track 13, Close to You, another short track on the album, just over one minute. I'll be honest, I wasn't devastated, but you could have held my hand through this baby, let my mind run underneath warm jets, I run my hands through what's left, but we're getting older, baby, don't have much longer, baby. Why am I preaching to this choir, to this atheist? Close to You is another track on the album that touches on relationships and um he says we're getting older baby we're no longer kids we're no longer children and um just like mine a version of these belong to you after a while they're keeping me close to you let's move on to track 14 white ferrari 
Bad luck to talk on these rides. Watch the clouds flow white Ferrari. I was out of I let you out. I didn't care to stay the plane. Amelia. That was my part of the deal. We got so familiar. Good times. I'm sure we're taller than nothing to mention Tired of moving, your body's thinking That the rest can't take what's been given But we're so okay, it's just a scoliosis That's what they call it That was track 14 at White Ferrari I went on a journey listening to this track. The opening of this track was very ambient and I liked the layering of the vocals throughout the track. It's kind of like a two-parter, just like nights, I guess. And the second half, it's more acoustic. Um, and it does say here, the song was co-written by John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and Kanye West. Bad luck to talk on these rides, mind on the road, your dilated eyes watch the clouds float. White Ferrari had a good time pre-16. How was I supposed to know anything? I let you out at Central. I didn't care to state the plane. Kept my mouth closed. We're both so familiar. White Ferrari, stick by me. Close by me. You were fine. You were fine here. Good times in this life. One too many years. Some tattooed eyelids on a facelift. Mind over matter is magic. I do magic. And then he goes on to say, I'm sure we're taller in another dimension. You say we're small and not worth the mention. You're tired of moving, your body's aching. Once again, these lyrics are just overwhelming. You dream of walls that hold us in prison. It's just a skull. At least that's what they call it, and we're free to roam. The track finds Frank Ocean using the image of a ride in a white Ferrari as a metaphor for a fast and pure relationship with a lover. Okay, so white, the color white, which he has used before in his songs, Innocence and Purity. Frank uses the same melodic phrasing as in the Beatles' 1966 Revolver track, here, there, and everywhere. And this goes back to what I said at the beginning of the video, how Frank was inspired by the Beach Boys and the Beatles. Frank Ocean also revealed that there were 50 different versions of this song. I love this track so much. It's one of my favorites on the album. It's gorgeous. It touches you. The overall composition and his vocals, the songwriting, the story, just perfection. But let's move on to track 15, Siegfried. Your speckled face Blood crystals hang from your ears I can't relate to my peers I'd rather chip my pride than lose my mind down here Two kids in a swimming pool
speaking of Nirvana in the stand. Think of the dream of the thought that could think of dreaming and getting the gleam of God. Where I cannot. My soul the flare will consume, so I not. Eat some shrooms, maybe have a good cry about you. See some colors. I do for you. That was track 15, Siegfried. I can't, I can't. That gorgeous, moody production. Love it. And don't even get me started on the lyrics. A lot to unpack, at least for me anyway, just like a lot of the other songs on the album. Been living in an idea, an idea from another man's mind. Maybe I'm a fool to settle for a place with some nice views. Maybe I should move, settle down, two kids and a swimming pool. I'm not brave. I'd rather live outside. I'd rather go to jail. I've tried hell. What would you recommend I do? This is not my life. It's just a fond farewell to a friend. Speaking of Nirvana, it was there. Rare as the feathers on my dash from a phoenix. What are these lyrics? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a huge lyric junkie. I am a writer, by the way, and I just get a hard-on for lyrics sometimes. Words and stories. It looks like there's this life he's envisioning for himself. It's like living in another man's mind. Kids in a swimming pool and moving to a better place. But he'd rather live outside, I'd rather go to jail, I've tried hell. It's just a fond farewell to a friend. And then the song ends with, i do anything for you in the dark. Once again, I need help. <laughs> Frank Ocean sings about his misgivings, about his current lifestyle, and society's expectation of him. At times he wishes he could run away and enjoy a quieter life with two kids and a swimming pool. The song title is a misspelling of the dragon slain Norse warrior Siegfried. Frank admits in the song that he's not brave, in contrast with Siegfried's traditional machoism. Timeless. Absolutely timeless. These lyrics are so introspective, and they are worded in such an interesting way. And not only do they kind of leave you scratching your head, but they're very creative and um, just spectacular. Let's move on to track 16, Godspeed. That was track 16, Godspeed. I was once again getting teary-eyed. I mean, that alone speaks for itself. I will always love you how I do. Let go of a prayer for ya. Just a sweet word. The table is prepared for you. Wish you Godspeed. Glory. There will be mountains you won't move. Still, I'll always be there for you. How I do. I let go of my claim on you. 
it's a free world. You look down on where you came from sometimes, but you'll have this place to call home always. Let's move on to track 17, Futura Free. Was track 17 Futura free. I mean, what do I say? <laughs> I this was quite overwhelming in terms of me trying to just say and articulate how I felt when I heard this song. This odyssey of a track over nine minutes. It looks like there's two distinct parts to the overall track. The opening, he's singing about... I mean, it's very thought-provoking. It's very philosophical and introspective. He's singing about his past, present, future, his life, his career, his relationships. I will also say that he does bring up a lot of dead musicians on this album. For example, at one point, he brings up Selena. And then the second half, there are various, it looks like these random, or maybe they're not random, these people are being asked questions and there's this immense static in the background. So it's hard to hear at times, in particular, the people's answers. You can hear the questions, but the answers are very, um, can't really understand a lot of what's being said. He's asking questions like, what do you want to do? And how far is a light year? And he's asking, what's your first memory? What's your name? What do you do? What's the most amazing thing you've ever witnessed? The first part of the song finds Frank reflecting on his life and rise to fame in a stream of consciousness. He recalls working on his feet for $7 an hour, Tyler, the creator, sleeping on his sofa, and Jay-Z hitting him up on email. Frank also tells his mom 
that he's surprised he's now getting paid 400, 600, 800K doing what he loves. The second part is a series of interviews carried out by Frank's younger brother, Ryan, and they are asked simple biographical questions such as what's your name or what's your first memory. Now Ryan, Frank Ocean's brother who appears in this song, did die when he was 18. Um, he died in 2020 actually. And he died from blunt force head injuries in a single vehicle collision early Sunday morning in Thousand Oaks. It was nice to hear Ryan in this track. He seemed like he was having a great time, laughing and enjoying himself. I mean, what a way to wrap up this album. So unexpected, so different, and so introspective, so emotional even, and... I quite enjoyed it. So that was all 17 tracks of Blonde by Frank Ocean. This, I mean, very, very, very overwhelming for me. Especially the lyrics. I mean, the lyrics, so good. I don't need to tell you that. And just the way the words are strung together, very creative left me scratching my head, very introspective, meaningful. He touches on relationships, his life, um, his sexuality and his career and his past, his present, and even, I guess, his future. And it's just a very captivating album. I also loved the production on this album the ambience of so many of these songs, so gorgeous, very lush at times, and acoustic, there's strings, the organ, what else was there? Dream pop, and I don't know, I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> I mean, this album really is a work of art, and it's fantastic. Each and every one of these songs has a story, it has a purpose. There is lots of meaning in these songs, a lot of emotion. And you can hear it in not just his voice, but the songwriting and the instruments. It's extremely cohesive, it's put together so well, it flows beautifully. And I mean, this album, I'm gonna say it, I don't often use this word in my videos. I've only used it a few times before to describe an album, but this album really is a masterpiece and um, it just resonates with you. You have to deeply listen to the lyrics and the stories and let the music take you over. There were quite a few unexpected moments. A lot of these songs took unexpected twists and turns and also the vocals on some of these tracks, I wasn't expecting the autotune. It's not boring, it's not lame, it's quite creative and different and exciting and it leaves you wanting more the further you listen to it. You really do go on a journey listening to each and every one of these songs. It's an odyssey. It's gorgeous, it's sad, it's lonely, it's pretty. It's warm, it's moody, and yeah. I mean, that's really all I have to say. What else could I possibly say? I called it a masterpiece. I mean, there's nothing else I can say. I mean, once you call something a masterpiece, that's it. It's a wrap. A very thought-provoking and philosophical and... Just very, very, very meaningful album. So what did you guys think of the album and what are your impressions of it? Maybe you think it's overrated. Maybe you don't think it deserves the hype it received. Tell me why. I personally do think it deserves all the hype it received and all the praise. And that's essentially a wrap on this series because he has only put out two albums. He hasn't put out an album in what? six years. It's 2022. This album came out in 2016. But you know what? I would rather Frank Ocean take his time 
then rush out another album. And officially, I think that's all I have to say. I'm sure there's things I want to say that I forgot to mention. Um, but it's just one of those situations where my mind is just mush. I said what I needed to. If I forgot to mention a couple things, it is what it is. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. You can find me on Twitter, and you can find me on Instagram. You can message me, you can say, hey, how are you? And I will see you next time. Take care.